I've always felt myself to be uh, lucky to be at the beginning of a lot of West Indian things, you know? The beginning of independence, the beginning of the university, the beginning of, um, I don't know, theater. I've always felt myself, you know, in a very exciting, um, pioneering position, exploratory position, not as a leader, but as somebody, as something new, a new experience is happening. That child who sets his half shell afloat in the brown creek that is Rampanalgas River was, like his father, this child, a child without any history, without knowledge of its pre-world, only the knowledge of water runnelling rocks and the desperate whelk that grips the rock's outcrop, like a man whom the waves can never wash overboard, that child who puts the shell's howl to his ear, hears nothing, hears everything that the historian cannot hear. I think the torment of a West Indian intelligence is the weight of the degradation of the past. Um, and I think that that sense of history, as I try to write about often, to eradicate that sense of guilt and self-contempt is the beginning of a West Indian civilization. I stand out on a balcony and watch the sun pave its flat golden path across the roofs, the aerials, cranes, the tops of fruit trees crawling downward to the city. Something inside is laid wide like a wound. Some open passage that has cleft the brain, some deep amnesiac blow. We left somewhere life we never found, customs and gods that are not born again. Some crib some grill of light clanged shut on us in bondage and withheld us from that world below us and beyond. And in its swaddling ceremonies, we are still bound. What the extension of the, of the image means is that on the slave ships, the slaves were not really pinned down under the grating or under the arm. Um, you know, in the hold of the ship, and that, in a sense, the dead who are under the lid of the sea, right, are also still in a sort of petrified or, you know, um, arrested journey. And um, those people who are living in these shacks under the tin roofs are still, in a way, still under mm -hmm. that um, imprisonment, right, yes. that they have not really escaped um, from one ship I mean, they've left one kind of ship mm -hmm. and gone into another, yeah. you know, and the whole. And I, I, once I saw a film by Sajajit Ray, uh, set in Bengal, The World of Apu. And I have written about this. I went to the film. And when I came out, I was in tears because I hadn't, I'd been away from Trinidad for a long time. And India looked so much like, you know, I mean, that part of India looked so much like the cane fields of, uh, of Kuva and so on, that I could understand the nostalgia, you know, that would have been there in my mind that time to see it. Um, and that's the sort of thing I, you know, I try to get in the poem. My friends spit on the government. I do not spit on the government. Suppose all the gods too old. Suppose they're dead and they're burning them. Suppose when some cane cutter start chopping up snakes with a cutlass, he is severing the snake-armed god. And suppose some hunter has caught Hanuman in his mischief in a monkey cage. Suppose all the gods were killed by electric light. Sunset, a bonfire roars in my ears. Embers of blown swallows dart and cry like women distracted around its cremation. I ascend to my bed of sweet sandalwood. What gave us, as writers of our generation, a great deal of confidence, right, was exactly what I'm talking about, right? That um, we had a heritage, we felt a heritage in the language. What we felt was complete freedom, an astonishing freedom to create, right? Uh, not only were you writing um, what may have been the first 
you thought, you would hope, would be the first great West Indian poem, right? Uh, or the first great West Indian novel, right? Not even the great part, just the first, you know, yeah. novel, you know, yes. um, is an, a fantastic excitement. Now, that has remained, I think, um, whether it is in a cynicism that is in Naipaul, whether it is in what appears to be naivete in Selvan, or appears to be visionary and prophetic and bardic in Laming or whoever, right? That excitement is still there because the society, whether it's chaotic or not, you know, that excitement of, of describing it remains.